Hi, Paul here from Trekit and we're in the Hereford shop today because we're not allowed outside yet to talk to you about the uh, rather lovely Arcteryx Norvan VT2 GTX shoe. Uh, I'm just going to call it the Norvan because it's got quite a long name and I'll probably forget it throughout the whole video. Uh, so what is the uh, Arcteryx Norvan? It's, it's, a, it's a lovely, lovely shoe. Uh, it's designed for uh, people who are moving fast and light in the mountains. And in true Arcteryx style, the clue for its intended use is in the name. So Norvan VT. VT stands for Vertical Terrain. So there you have it. It's a shoe for mountain use, uh, for hiking, for some light scrambling, uh, just some day walking, anywhere where you're getting more vertical and you're getting onto kind of rough terrain and you need a really supportive yet lightweight and super kind of fast, nimble shoe to wear in those kinds of conditions. It's pretty much kind of one shoe does it all uh, unless you're looking to do some really heavy mountaineering uh, and obviously not suitable for kind of winter scrambling and that kind of thing. So if you want a summer lightweight shoe that's going to give you plenty of support, plenty of comfort and perform superbly, then the Norvan VT2 GTX should be on your list. Okay, so before I start prattling on about all the techie stuff, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you hit the little bell icon, you'll get notifications as soon as we post any new videos. Okay, so what are the Norvan VT2 GTXs made from? Uh, well, in true Arcteric style, uh, they're made absolutely superbly. You can be assured that they are constructed with the utmost care and attention, and that's immediately apparent as soon as you pick them up. They are a thing of beauty. I really do like Arcteric footwear. Uh, they're just put together superbly, and the materials that they used are all there for a reason. So the majority of the shoe is made up of a lightweight mesh nylon, uh, which is incredibly durable. It's really tough and it's got a very low water absorbency as well. So if they do get wet, that fabric's gonna dry out really, really quickly. And then over the top of that, to help to reduce wear and to provide some more structure around the shoe, you've got this TPU film overlays uh, in core areas around the heel and around the side of the shoe. And then you've got a, 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 an increased area of rubber around the toe and a really solid rubber toe bumper at the front. So designed for strength, durability, lightweight and maximum performance. Uh, and, and they look absolutely stonking, they really do. They're quite futuristic. Uh, the thing that becomes immediately apparent when you look at these shoes is the uh, almost 100% uh, lack of any stitching. Stitching is invariably an area of footwear that will fail the most. Uh, the stitching gets uh, broken by rocks, it gets torn, it gets abraded, it gets abused, and that will generally cause a failure. And so Arcteryx have done away with almost all of the stitching. I'm looking at this shoe here. There's a little bit around the edge of the uh, lace placket here. Uh, and that's about all the stitching that I can see on here. So it's super minimalist uh, and made to cope with tough environments in the mountains. Okay, so that's the upper of the boot, so, or the shoe, sorry. So behind that, uh, you've got a Gore-Tex membrane. Now this is no ordinary Gore-Tex membrane. This is the new and uh, quite brilliant, actually, Gore-Tex invisible fit membrane. Uh, traditionally, boots or shoes were made waterproof with Gore-Tex. They, they would uh, produce a kind of a sock made out of Gore-Tex with all tape seams and stitched together and then that would be suspended within the boot and the boot would be constructed around it. And that was fine, it worked really, really well, but Invisible Fit takes that one step further by directly bonding the membrane to the one piece upper. So this is all one piece, this upper, uh, and the Gore-Tex membrane is bonded directly to the back of it. And that gives you a much, much cleaner feeling inside. I've got my hand inside here now. There's no wrinkles, there's no bumps, you can't feel any seams. It's really, really smooth, so it's not going to affect the fit and the feel of the shoe. Uh, and also you're going to get enhanced breathability. 
how are you going to get enhanced breathability? Well, the fact that the membrane is, di is bonded directly to the back of the face fabric means that there's no gap between the face fabric and the Gore-Tex booty like you got in traditional construction. That gap between the two would fill up with moisture, would fill up with water from wet, you know, wet grass, tromping through puddles, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. And that would impair the breathability of the membrane because you've got a layer of cold water sat on top of the membrane. But with invisible fit technology, there's no gap between the membrane and the fabric. It's bonded directly together, so no water can get between the two. And the fact that the upper material on this boot, the shoe, is has very, very low water absorbency it means there's going to be very little water sat on top of that membrane, so you're going to get maximum breathability. It really is clever technology and uh, just feels absolutely fantastic. It just feels really clean, smooth, light. Uh, it feels fantastic. It's a, it's a great piece of technology. So moving on to uh, the midsole of the shoe. So the midsole is, is the black bit here between the grey outer sole and the upper of the boot. Uh, keep calling it a boot, the shoe. Uh, and the midsole is there to provide cushioning, support, comfort and strength. Uh, Arcteryx have used a compressed EVA. So they've kind of pre-compressed it to make sure it's working to its maximum uh, while still providing cushioning. So it just makes it a little harder but still provides cushioning and it means it's uh, prone to uh, less deterioration over time because of that pre-compression. So you get lots of comfort and support, but, feel it, but feeling really kind of strong, and if it just feels like you've got your foot on something kind of solid yet comfortable. It's hard to explain, but it feels fantastic when you've got them on. It just feels like, yes, these are gonna work. And also uh, in the midsole, you've got a TPU sheet uh, running from kind of around the forefoot through the arch into the heel, which provides the strength. Now, compared to maybe something like the Aerios, which is a lighter shoe from Arcteryx, these feel far stronger underfoot. And that's because of the name, the VT, the vertical terrain. They're designed to be used on more uneven terrain, uh, more vertical, a bit of scrambling, you know, uh, mountain walking, trekking. Uh, so you've got a much stronger midsole underfoot with that EVA foam to give you the comfort. At this point, it's worth mentioning uh, that we do a non-gore version of the uh, Norvan VT2. Um, and actually, it's my shoe of choice. It's what I'm wearing at the moment. Uh, the big difference between the two shoes, between the Gore-Tex and the non-gore, obviously, is that this doesn't have a Gore-Tex membrane in, so it's much more breathable. Uh, it's going to dry out incredibly quickly if you get water inside, and I can testify to that. I've been uh, up to my knees in a river in these, and they do dry out exceptionally quickly. But the big difference in the construction is that the non-gore version has a sock fit around the tongue. So the tongue in is held in place with kind of like a lycra sock inside the shoe, which gives it a really close, uh, kind of really comfortable feeling and it also stops any debris going down, for, uh, down the side of the tongue and into the shoe itself. So that's the main difference. No Gore-Tex membrane and then a sock fit system around the tongue. Inside, you'll find uh, a nice ortholite footbed. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly standard affair, to be honest. It's a, it's a perforated foam footbed, just enough there to give you a bit of comfort uh, underfoot. And then on the outsole, you get the brilliant Vibram Mega Grip. You can actually feel when you pick this shoe up and kind of grab hold of it, it almost feels like it's sticking to you. And that's because, as the name implies, it's mega grippy. It's quite a lightweight tread pattern, but there it's enough there to give you plenty of grip and control on loose surfaces and over rock. And then on the toe section, you get a blocked out kind of climbing zone if you are doing some scrambling or you're on some steeper ground. And there's even a little window at the bottom here. I like it when manufacturers do this. You can actually see the technology. This is the, the TPU sheet in the midsole, which is providing that kind of underfoot strength. So there you have the uh, Vibram Mega Grip. Works really well in the wet, in the dry, in the warm, in the cold, on a variety of surfaces. Just a, a really, really good, useful, versatile sole unit.
To be honest, most of the features of this shoe have been covered in the construction because that's where all the magic happens. Uh, I, I keep banging on about it, but it's just a beautiful thing. I mean, Arcteryx really do make some lovely kit. Uh, but there are a couple of things worth mentioning. Uh, you get an extra lace hole uh, set further back here if you want to really pull that in around the heel and around the ankle to give you extra support. Uh, it also uses up a bit of lace, so if you don't like big floppy bows, flop it around, it takes up a bit of the lace. I tend to lace mine like that, they just make them feel nice and snug around the ankle. And what it does also do is it pulls this fabric in, so if you do tend to pronate or supinate a little bit, it doesn't get all baggy around the edge of the ankle there. Uh, if you want to tuck your laces away, there's a little lace pocket up at the top here, top of the tongue, so once you've done your bow, you can tuck that up inside. And then you've got a, a little webbing loop at the back, so if you are climbing, for instance, and using this as an approach shoe or as an exit shoe, you can clip these to your harness and uh, do your climb, slip them on, jog back down. So how do the Norvan VT2 GTX fit? Well, uh, I'll be honest, they fit me absolutely superbly. And like I said earlier, I've got the non-gore version. It's my everyday walking, just everyday shoe. Love them. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're going to fit you beautifully because I've probably got very different shaped feet to you uh, and, and the rest of the population. So uh, we would always advise uh, if you can get to the shop, come and uh, come and see us for a boot fit. But uh, how they fit generally, is uh, bang on size wise so I would normally wear a UK 9 or a 43 in pretty much all of my footwear and I am wearing a size 9 in the Norvans now. Uh, they have a mid width so if unless you're really really wide or really really skinny they're going to fit so I guess a regular fit. They have a low to mid volume so they're not too baggy around the toes but they're a lovely shape you can wiggle your toes nicely and the heel is nice and slim and holds it really well into place, particularly if you're using that extra little loop that I talked about earlier on the laces. So a pretty general, easy fit, size-wise is pretty bang on. If you were confident of your foot size, you could be confident in buying that size in the Norvans. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Uh, you've been looking at the Norvan VT2 GTX shoe from Arcteryx. A, a simply a beautiful thing uh, that's going to cope with most mountain activities. Really like them, uh, you can probably guess. And like I said, I've got a pair myself. It's my shoe of choice. Uh, as usual, if you have any comments or questions, pop them in the section below. It's always a pleasure to hear from you. And Harry will put various links up on the screen so you can follow those through and have a look at the, uh, the non-gore, have a look at the gore, have a look at the colours available and geek out on all the details. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, see you again soon. Toodaloo.